Hey, Mike with Nerd Problems Gaming here, the channel where we go through the good and bad of everything nerdy to make sure you spend your time on the best of the best. In today's video, I'll be doing a review of Ultra Core from In In Games, so let's get into it. So Ultra Core is a run and gun shooter that was originally supposed to be released on the Amiga, Sega Genesis, and Sega CD, but was actually canceled, but since has been brought back to modern systems of the PS4 and Nintendo Switch. And so in this game, you play as a lone soldier who is taking on a mysterious villain, Vance, who controls a powerful killer robot army. So it seems a little bit like a Terminator-esque apocalypse going on, and you're the last soldier that can defend the world from this oncoming invasion. So throughout this game, you traverse through various levels where you'll be taking on this robot army and traversing the map and finding various key cards to unlock new areas in the map and to progress further. And so throughout this game, you pick up a ton of different weapons and you can even upgrade these weapons as well, which is pretty cool. So you start with a standard gun that kind of has unlimited ammo, but then you'll also pick up ammo throughout the levels that you can use for any of the various different gun power-ups you find hidden throughout the levels. And so as you go through, it has some different platforming and puzzle aspects to it as well because you need to seek out and find these keys, figure out where they can be used throughout the level. And there's even hidden secrets throughout the level as well where you can destroy various walls and find items and coins hidden throughout the levels. And so as you progress, the story slowly starts to unravel and you figure out what's going on. But again, it's not a super in-depth story either. And so as you go through the various levels, you encounter mega robots that are kind of the bosses of the levels. And each one of them is unique and you'll need to use various strategies and different weapon types to be able to take them down. And so the game itself kind of plays like a twin stick shooter, but almost, right? And so since it was originally developed for systems like the Sega Genesis, at times the controls can be a little bit clunky, but for the most part it plays pretty well. Where as you're running, you can hold down the shoot button and it kind of locks your gun in place. But if you stop moving, you can move your gun around to shoot different areas on the screen. And like I said, for the most part it handles pretty well, but occasionally I found myself getting frustrated or not running the right direction I wanted to or falling off a ledge or something like that because of the controls. But again, once you've played a few levels, you kind of get used to it. The gameplay is definitely challenging and you're going to die a lot as you play until you really get the hang of the game. But again, like I said, I think once you've played through a few levels, died a few times, it starts to become second nature as you play. And the game itself isn't super long. I would say you could complete it in maybe three to five hours, depending on how many times you die and how long it takes you to kind of get the hang of things. But there are certainly some frustrating aspects of the game as well when you play. One part that really made me frustrated was there's certain areas that you can reach by jumping on top of the robots and it kind of propels you higher. And so there are points in the game where I didn't even really realize that that was a thing that you needed to do, or again, that it was almost required in some points. So if you kill off the robots, they're kind of gone from the level until you die again. And so it made some areas almost inaccessible. There's specific jumps that you can do if you time it just perfect, but more often than not, trying to do it that method just led to numerous deaths and frustration. And within the game, you only have so many continues, and then you have to start the game over. Luckily, there is a password system, but it definitely reminded me of some old school games with passwords, like the original Metroid, where it's something like 10, 15 letters and numbers you know, mixed up that are impossible to remember. And there is no save feature, so definitely write that down if you wanna continue from where you left off as you play the game. The music track is pretty good, but one thing I'll note is that since it is kind of Sega based, I feel like it has that twangy aspect to it in the music tracks. I didn't grow up with a Sega Genesis, so I only really played them in later years, but that's one thing I really tend to notice when I play Sega games or Sega based games, that they have those twangy aspects with the sound effects in the game. Certainly not a deal breaker, but for someone that didn't grow up with that, it definitely stands out to me when I play games from that era. I never really noticed it on like the Super Nintendo or the NES, really just more so the Sega systems that are like that. But again, I think if you like old school run and gun shooters, you'll enjoy this game. Probably gonna super date myself too, but it really reminded me of kind of the original 2D Duke Nukem games that were on old DOS systems on the computer. So you can see some screenshots here of what that looks like, but that's really what the playstyle kind of reminded me of as I played through the game because you're running through 
finding these key cards, trying to get to new areas. So if you like that retro style 2D action shooters, I think you'll enjoy this game. Again, I think it would have been nice if they added in some modern features to the game like save state or a level select feature. But again, it's not a deal breaker. It's just more so that this game is kind of a direct port to modern systems versus like a remaster where they added in some extra bonuses. But let me know in the comments below if you think this game looks cool, if you've played it before, how you felt about it. And if you wanna pick this game up, there'll be links in the description below over to Strictly Limited Games where they do have physical versions of the game, or you can pick it up on the eShop on Nintendo Switch or over on PS4 as well. But again, guys, if you like this video, be sure to smash that like button as it really helps out the channel. If you haven't done so yet, be sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notifications to get the latest updates of new nerd videos we put out. And if you'd like to help us pick out content, support the channel and more, become a patron of ours at nerdproblemsgaming.com forward slash Patreon. And if you'd like to plug into our live streams and let's plays we do on the channel, you can follow us on Twitch at nerdproblemsgaming.com forward slash Twitch. But once again, thanks for tuning in and we'll talk to you more soon.